Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Herefordshire Means Business Networking Online. We're still here. We're still uh, out, out and about as far as the uh, virtual world goes, if we're not out and about in Herefordshire as it is. Um, with me today is the rest of the HMBIS team. So we've got Kerry, give us a wave, Kerry, and Richard, and Kim. And obviously, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions or queries uh, about uh, anything that uh, our speaker talks about today, or anything else you want to share with us, um, we're, we're connecting as much as we can uh, virtually. Uh, we do want to be out and about connecting. There are, have been a couple of things on, but we haven't uh, launched anything as yet. We're, uh, we're still keeping safe, as it were, uh, and listening to Boris as much as we can. Um, so. If you have any queries or anything you want to share, please put it in the in the chat box and we'll come to you after our speaker uh, has uh, done his speaking. Talking of speakers, I'll move straight on to today's speaker uh, and I'm really pleased to be joined by Rick uh, Notley from Romano or Romano or Romano, whatever you yeah. want to call it. You can tell Romano, us. Yeah. yeah. Um, and your LinkedIn says you're a marketing and brand pro, helping attract new business leads and build, helping you attract new business leads and build a brand. So I would I'd say a bit of a brand expert guru sort of thing. Um, and we met uh, quite a few years ago under a different brand. You were under a different yeah. brand. Uh, things have moved on, but uh, we've uh, stayed in touch uh, on the networking scene, etc. And uh, I'm really pleased that you're able to join us today uh, to tell us a bit more about what we should be doing with our business and our brand. So, I hand over to you. And uh, again, okay, any stories or questions, just put a cue or put your question or uh, we'll come to you um, after the, the presentation. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, thanks for having me. First of all, like Richard, I've known him a little while now and I think I've exhibited it two or three of the actual live expos that you put on certainly the first few that um you did and i brought all my branded goodies and all the things and everything that in between um so yeah i love what rich is doing and i think you know perfect for that sort of business community because it puts you all in the right place and to some extent you know it's a, it's a nice situation where all your ideal clients are in one position that's not always the case when it comes to you know social media yeah, marketing and that sort of thing sometimes it can feel a bit hit and miss and you're sort of spraying and praying and in the hope that the right person at the right time sort of picks things up um and that's kind of what i do is to have a look at right well ultimately i'm a firm believer in brand is everything and if you've got a solid brand that it makes everything that you market much easier because you know how it should look feel and sound anything that you produce you know in terms of sort of documentation or anything print all the sort of stuff like Richard will do you know you know that it's got a, a right look about it it's going to be quite quickly identifiable as you even just the language and the speech that's used sometimes you know I think that's an important part of somebody's brand um, and that obviously then translates into what you do in your social media so today I could have done a screen share or I could have done a death by powerpoint you know we could have looked at a couple of different sort of options today but I, I'm a firm believer in giving as much advice away for free, as much value as possible. Um, if anybody follows me on social media, the stuff that I charge for, if you were clever and looked at everything in my history that I've posted, you're going to find all that information there. Um, so there's a lot of sort of free tips and advice. And I've already sorted out with Rich that I've got a load of sort of PDF resources. So some social media tips, brand audit sheets. There's about four or five different PDFs, which I'll put in the chat shortly. Um, so you can download those. They're really sort of quick fire tips that you can all put in place for your business. Um, and they're all free things. You know, a lot of the sort of marketing and social media out there is free unless you're getting into the realms of paid ads and Google ads and sort of things like that. A lot of what you can do to promote your business doesn't cost anything other than that quite precious commodity of time, you know, that, and that's where you've got to sort of decide how much of that you want to invest. So, I mean, for my benefit, I know a few of you obviously already, but if you can put in the chat what your business is, you know, I'd love to sort of try and make it as relevant to you as possible. Um, at least then I can sort of see what sort of industries we've got. Good sort of mix then. Um, particularly what tends to be the case is service businesses, 
are often a, a, a sector which struggle to market themselves because there's not the tangible product or, or item that they can uh, sort of show off to their audience. So that tends to be um, something that I work on particularly. And a lot of it is telling that story. So a few things that um, I certainly want to share is that a lot of you or a lot of people I sort of come across will probably find that sometimes you don't have the time to look at doing your social media. Um, and that's a sort of common theme. You know, we're all very busy. There's lots going on, especially up until recently, if you've had kids running around the house and you're trying to work as well at the same time, that's not easy. So finding time to do this stuff can often be that barrier. And then it's like, right, I must do that tomorrow. Then tomorrow becomes next week. And before you know it, it's a fortnight and a month down the line. So something that I'm a big advocate of when it comes to your marketing is done is better than perfect. And I just want that to sort of sink in for a minute because a picture, a post, some crafted text, a share of something from your office, your business or something you sell is going to be a lot better out there for people to see and let it live and breathe than if you spend days and days perfecting what you're going to say and how it's going to look. And I, I do think sometimes it comes down to confidence to, for a lot of sort of businesses that if you know marketing is not your thing or you know you're not sure what to say, you end up actually saying nothing, and so then you end up with big gaps in your sort of marketing. It can be very sort of up and down, peak and trough. And then the problem is, is you sort of end up panicking, and when you, there's a real need for business or leads to come in, that's when you suddenly have a flurry, and then out of nowhere, your audience is sort of bombarded with daily posts, yet you haven't done anything for weeks. So a couple of things I just want to sort of plant in your mind, if you like, is um, so some clients know that I use this phrase, which is called toilet and tea time, and it's not to be crude, but what my suggestion is, is that if you are someone that finds you don't have a lot of time, that time that you're waiting for your kettle to boil, that is two or three minutes where you could post on social media. It might just be one platform. It might be on LinkedIn to talk about what you're doing that day. Again, it's that storytelling sort of element of your marketing. So that's the tea time, the toilet time. If you are somebody that, that spends a few more minutes than you should in the toilet and you've got your phone to hand, why not be a little bit more productive? I'll leave it at that for you to sort of figure out what I mean by that. But there are plenty of opportunities throughout the day where you can find four or five minutes is pretty much where I'm going with this. And you'd be amazed how just by changing that focus, how much more benefit your marketing will have for having those sort of small snippets. Now, I'm not saying always that you might want to create or post something in that four or five minutes. You know, when the kettle's on, that's generally when I'll look for new contacts on LinkedIn, for instance. So I've got a list in my notes on my phone of sort of key areas, client avatars, you know, hit lists, whatever you want to call it, of the sort of people that I want to sort of try and do business with. So when I'm making a, a coffee um, or a tea, I'll sit and I'll just revert back and think, right, I'm going to do a search on LinkedIn. And I'm just going to make sure I connect with, you know, 5, 10, 15 people, drop a few intro messages if it's relevant. And that's, you know, good output. If you do 10, 15 a day, you know, then you're looking at, hundred potential connections a week that's you know four or five hundred a month before you know it you know your audience on linkedin just in swapping that mindset has grown exponentially so um i've got one client that went from i think 300 connections and they're on two and a half thousand or something now and they're all very industry specific into the in the events world so you know she's not just connecting left right and center with anybody it's who is you know her ideal client and audience so um you know, just having a quick look in the chat. So what we've got, we've got, uh, let's have a look, go back to the top. Uh, so we've got Paula, uh, independent living care services for disabled people. So, you know, that's where on LinkedIn, I would probably have a look at, right, who else has got that client? You know, who else could you share that sort of client pool with? Because that might be where there's opportunities to do stuff together. Um, you've got Graham with, from online marketing, SEO and AdWords services. So perfect, you know, he's in that realm of, people who want more leads from their business so you know that's where you can look at if you specialize in local business you can start to sort of do search based on that and then have a look at people's local and that's sort of an approach that I try and take every day is just trying to sort of grow my network and sort of make sure that I'm in front of the right people but the flip side to that is obviously you want to make sure that when that notification comes up that says Rick Notley would like to connect that when you go who the hell is Rick Notley 
you've got something that is ready for them to see. Now, start part of that will start with obviously your tagline, you know, if it's on LinkedIn in terms of how that looks, but also the content. So you've got to make sure that what you're putting out there is on brand, but also speaks to them. So, you know, a good sort of takeaway, and you'll see this in the brand order audit sheet that I, I send is have a look at your profile as if your perfect client was about to read it. And does it speak to them or does it read more like a sales pitch or a CV? And you might just find that you sort of tweak a few things. You think, actually, do you know what? Nobody see, needs to see those 10 letters after my name. They don't care. They just want to know that I'm good at what I do or, you know, they want to see your experience or the case studies or the testimonials. So just have a look at your profiles from that filter of if my best client looked at it, would they see what they would like to see? And is that going to sort of hopefully start that conversation to start them working? Um, but from a marketing point of view, a phrase I love, I can't remember where I first came across it, but, you know, and, and now with everything that's gone on and it's all having to go on, it, never more relevant, if you like, is the, um, the worst time to plant a tree is when you need the wood. And when you start to sort of think about that, and it's a bit like what most people's approach to sales and marketing is when it goes online is they get busy, busy, busy. So they stop doing their marketing. They stop posting online. They stop talking to their existing clients. And then suddenly something can happen that's often out of their control. Nothing more so than COVID as we've all encountered. And then it's a bit awkward because you're like, right, actually we really need to try and get some business in. And you're going from a standing start because you've got nothing out there. There's no sort of consistency, no campaign. And so you, when you sort of go back to that saying of, you know, the worst time to, plant a tree is when you need the wood because there is such a lead time different in every business but you know everything from days and weeks to months sometimes before you start to see that return so little and often again toilet and tea time five minutes a day whatever your takeaway is that makes you sort of have a look at it a bit more consistency that is really really key um so try and sort of incorporate that if you can and obviously rich knows me as a a branding guy like your this is a rare opportunity for you to see me in color normally you'll find everything i do is in black and white because that's part of my brand and i've had that on meetings before where they're like no way i've actually i've never even seen you in color because every video i change to black and white every filter every photo is black and white that is my brand and i okay take it to an extreme to some extent but obviously that's for me to to do that but the important takeaway for you guys is you should hope that your audience and your network can look at something that you put out there and they can immediately identify it as something of yours even if your logo and brand and name isn't quite obviously splashed all over it and that is where it becomes part of you know living and breathing your brand branding is obviously part of that and, and your logo and the design but brand is everything from the way that you talk the way that you speak the language that you use if i email you or i message you on social media it's no different to i meet you face to face i'm not two different personalities so there's a consistency there if i start writing a long email i sort of think to myself actually do you know what? i'm just going to pick up the phone because i'm in a contact business and i'm not in the essay writing business so it makes more sense that we have that direct connection which is you know what i love about social media so again you'll see in the brand audit sheet but it's interesting when you start having a look at your social media as you and you, I tend to go through every client's last 10 posts on every platform and just sort of have a look at it and just sort of go, is the language the same? Is the style of things that I'm putting out there the same? Are the photos the same? The graphics? Because sometimes it's tempting to sort of go, oh, I saw that on Google. That looks good. I'll share that. And then, well, that's quite cool. Yeah, I'm going to use that and I'm going to put that together. And then before you look at it, all in context and especially on Instagram where you've got the, the nine titles, it can look a bit like a Rubik's cube. Sometimes there's just no, there's no consistency across those blocks. And they think, well, actually that's not a brand that's activity, but it's not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to grow you and sort of push you forward. So, you know, the brand game is a long game. It's a patient one. You know, that's where you want to have that sort of 80, 20 mix of 80% brand and marketing, 20% sales. You know, if you're going to use the, Pareto principle of you know splitting that across so that you're not selling all the time and if you can find ways of indirectly selling then fantastic that is the absolute win of course you know and that's where I try and you know work in the merchandise everything that you do if I take a sip of 
of coffee. It's always out of a branded mug. Like there's never a missed opportunity sort of thing. And it's, and it's getting yourself ready to do that. So just, yeah, have a look at your company, have a look at your, your business. Just think, am I a brand or am I a business? And there's a massive difference between the two. And you, you might think, you know what, I'm a business. That's not, not what I'm looking to achieve. But it's interesting when you start to sort of drill down to it, you know, it's more than just colors, fonts and typefaces and, you know, assets and things like that. If you look at the HMB guys, look at all their backgrounds. Those guys are prepped. They are ready. They've got, you know, the, the colors are there. It's all green with a little yellow accent. Go on, Richard. And then, uh, you know, that is something that is a small win. But straight away, even peripherally, I can see, you know, which of you guys are part of that organization. That looks great. It's the same whenever I've been to one of the events that Rich and the team have put on, that the lanyards are on point, the tablecloths are there, the roller runners. The welcoming committee is very much, we are HMB and, you know, we're here to help you get the most of the show. But what that does is it immediately makes you trust them more because, you know, that, that's what a real brand can sort of help you do. So I forget the exact stat, but it's something around 13, 14 times that you need to see a logo or a person and then your brain will start to, recognize it and become to trust it as known even if you've not necessarily used that person so you know if you see that r in the, the circle for instance 10 12 13 times you'll suddenly start to think well i know these guys they've been around for a long time so they're clearly trustworthy because you know i've seen them lots and maybe i've used them or maybe clients of mine have and so it's those little subtle nuances that you can work in to your marketing which help people to trust you and you know those of you that do networking the best networking is the ones where, you know, if you've got relationships with those people because you see them lots of times, you know, first time meet, it's always the business card swap and fantastic. You know, if there's an opportunity to do business, you do the the exchange. Second time, how are things? You start to really start to get into those layers of, you know, what someone is about. Third, fourth, fifth meet, you're going out for food. Maybe you're having drinks, you know, their kids' names, you know what's going on. So your relationships are so much tighter and that's exactly the same with, you know, companies and their branding. So I've just spotted there. So Andrew's just put in there, runs a charity, um, a memorial fund. You know, charities are, are a business and they are a brand. And, you know, I work with a lot of charities and often their, their sole aim is, is fundraising. But, you know, a charity is always trying to be in mind, you know, so that either from a fundraising point of view, support, but also it's that game of exposure and everything you do is about attention and that's effectively what you're trying to create. Um, so yeah, I'll just think we've lost someone's video feed isn't working. Um, but yeah, being on brand and tr just trying to sort of filter that into your, your marketing is absolutely key. So I, any questions, please do keep them coming along. And if there's anything you guys want to know specifically for your business, please do put it in the chat or, you know, if Rich wants to moderate, unmute him quite happy to sort of do that um how long have we got rich actually i didn't ask you how long um probably another 10 minutes maybe and then okay, cool. q a afterwards yeah perfect okay so um a couple of other things that i just want to sort of make sure that i sort of cover from the merchandise side you know that obviously contributes to the marketing and being on brand and i love that stuff and even as someone in that space, I still get excited about getting sent merch and receiving merchandise from other people. And I do think there's something in our DNA that goes back to school and when you got your new pencil case and the new pens and stuff. And, you know, if ever, if ever you get a new notebook, you look how neat those first few pages are and then give it three months. Then you just, you're scribing across it, tearing out pages. You don't care anymore. But at the beginning, it's that smell, it, it's nostalgia. So, I don't know if that's what it is, but so I get love. I love getting samples, and but what I also love is giving it away. You know that that has been the absolute backbone of launching my business. Is I moved into a completely new area. I must have given out ten, twelve grand's worth of merchandise, and just absolutely flooded the area and the networking scene with stuff. And it became a bit of a joke. You know, have you even been networking if you haven't been Romano'd yet? And people finding mugs in their cupboards and if i used to go for meetings i'd take my own mugs and leave them and then you know they'd, three weeks down the line they'd find it in the cupboard sort of thing and it's just subtle placement like just yeah it's that sort of half guerrilla marketing but the thing i love the most is um direct mail campaigns i mean 
for anybody that's ever done sort of lumpy mail as it's sometimes known in the past you know the effectiveness of actually posting something out to someone now in such a digital world even more so with zoom actually because we don't get those physical contacts anymore like we used to um a, a well planned out and followed up direct mail campaign with you know a bit of literature and some merchandise and sweets and chocolates um absolutely like will win so for some clients that will come to me and say right i want you to look at this and this and i'm all about sort of return on investment and you know anything you spend should be a positive return sometimes getting 40 or 50 items that are of a nice quality rather than you know everybody's seen the sort of cheap and cheerful giveaway pens and you know we've we've all got drawers of them and they do a job but you know if you send someone a nice boxed metal pen or a soft touch pen or i've got ones here with styluses and light up ends and you know they're more functional that's more likely to be the one they're going to use better still send them a nice you know moleskin style notebook and then you know they'll take that to their own meetings for a few months sort of thing so getting together a list of between 30 and 50 businesses or you know people that you'd like to work with go and find them on linkedin you know get the addresses if you can if not that's where you make friends with the sort of the team members the receptionists the pas whoever it might be that you need to do to get that item on the right person's desk um and do a direct mail campaign and just put some items with your logo on put in something that's of, of yours you know make a personal note whether it's a comp slip or a letter or whatever it might be chucking some haribo or love hearts or you know other sweets are available but make it something as if you've taken that time and you've picked them and that's that's the key thing you know social media marketing so much is broad and but it's so nice if someone gets something and thinks do you know what i'm on a list somewhere i'm special they clearly want to do something it's probably worth a phone call and the key is the follow-up you know you've got to know when that's going to arrive then sort of that time we follow up and you know I've done it before where I've rang and, you know, receptionist answered and I said, I'm hoping that John's halfway through a pack of Haribo's at the moment, just about to start writing in a notebook that I sent him. Do you mind if I just grab five minutes? Um, and then usually it ends up being a bit of a joke, you know, yeah, if you send me one as well sort of thing, but you can really skip the steps in getting to those, what are normally long-term clients that feel sometimes out of reach. You can really sort of skip those steps. So, um, yeah, definitely have a look at uh, if you want to send me a Moleskine notebook, I promise to take it to meetings. There you go. See, if you don't ask, you don't get. You and you're on. Ping me your address. There you go. First, first package going out. Um, and then I'll insist that Ewan puts a selfie on social media, holding it up, saying that it's the best quality he's ever had. Um, and, th and that is the thing is I've got an absolute bank of images in my saved items of people with merch and sort of stuff like that so again it's and this is where i want to sort of try and bring it around to how it forms part of your marketing oh, i've joked by taking a sip out of my mug and i've already shown you a pen and, and things like that but you might think sometimes for social media well i'm not sure what to put but if you just write on a pad what you're doing that day or i don't know today's to-do list is to book my stand at the next HMV event, speak to Richard about a new logo, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just put your branded pen underneath. You've suddenly got a post that's on brand without having to stick your logo on it. The same as I can take a picture of my monitor and anything on there. And I just leave my mug and my pen out sort of thing. So it's subtle. You're not, you're not sort of watermarking stuff, which is obvious. You're not making it look salesy. Um, you can wear a t-shirt with your logo on you can put something behind you you know there's lots of different ways of sort of working it in that aren't sort of big filters or, or watermarks um but you'd be amazed how many people will react well to receiving that merchandise the key is don't just send it and forget I, i've seen some absolute fails where they're like brilliant we've done this campaign and then i check in with them because obviously i want it to go well um, and they're like, yeah, we couldn't get hold of anybody. I was like, right, how many times did you try? Well, we emailed the once and I tried phoning and I just got a voicemail. I was like, right, you, you need to speak to those people within 24 hours, ideally, 72 hours. After that, it's cooling down. You're soon to be forgotten. You know, you, it, it's whilst you're hot. So I will normally say stagger it, send five or 10 a day. You all know what your comfort level is with follow up. So if you're not going to make, 20 phone calls a day or 50 phone calls a day and you're getting into telesales territory there you're certainly not going to 
you know want to send 50 because you're giving yourself a mountain so pace yourself and give yourself stuff throughout the week and then it's quite a nice feeling to feel like right i've done my daily check-ins for the day i'm going to hit my inbox and crack on you've got them out of the way and it can be a real boost when you get that good conversation you know bit of work proposal come off the back of it um i've just seen pop up uh can i ask a question with direct mail campaigns kush can where's angela do you want to unmute or type what's easiest go for a mute uh, no, thank you, Nick. Nick very interesting. Um, as, a, as a charity myself, with the GTBR, GP, GDPR changes, it was very difficult for me to go out with mail campaigning because of obviously I had to contact the businesses before I could even go send any information in. So how can I get around that without going over above and sort of like being a pest into businesses? Because I'm, I'm yep. really careful about what I do do. And I do do a lot of networking and, um, you know, normally I've got my T-shirt on, I've got my logo around me and, you know, quite I'm a road safety campaigner really for the charity in that background. So how can I as a charity do some direct mail campaigns without being over the top and still be compliant with GDPR? So the thing I would say with that is I would say 90% or more of all the campaigns we've done are done from public info. So, for instance, if a company's got a website with a contact page or, you know, their footer sort of thing, their address is public for all to see. So that, that's perfectly, you know, you're not breaking anything there by sort of using that information. They've put it up there as a point of contact. Sometimes it's just a case of cross-referencing and go, right, well, I've got ABC Limited here that I really want to work with. I'm going to go on LinkedIn and find out where that, who works at ABC. I'm going to grab a few names. Sometimes it's a sure bet that they're going to work in that building, depending on if it's a big multi-site organization, which has caught me out before. So it's worth sometimes a, a quick check. Um, mm -hmm. But that's where the receptionists and things like that can be your absolute you know, friend. I know a lot of people think of them as gatekeepers, but it's very different ringing and sort of going, oh, I'd, I'd like to speak to you and McPherson, please, because I've got something I want to send him. Mm -hmm. Because you're asking for permission as opposed to just changing that language to say, I've got a parcel that I'm just about to ship out to you and can I just double check he's in that office as opposed to yeah. same kind of approach, but just real yeah. subtle nuance in the, in the language. And mm -hmm. they then feel, so human nature is that we all want to help generally if you're a nice person. Um, so if you're asked a question, it's like, yeah, of course, that's my job. I'm here to help and support the business. So let me give you the information you need. Um, what I would say is if you really come unstuck with, sort of how to find someone's contact information. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, you don't ask, you don't get. So sometimes a message on LinkedIn to, and it tends to work well if it's not the person you want the element of surprise sometimes. So if you have a look at a business, you know, some businesses list it on their websites on about us pages and things. So you can kind of figure out the structure, but yeah, it can work really nicely to sort of go for some of the staff underneath sort of thing. Um, and I've actually done it before where I've even said, look, I've got a surprise that uh, that I want to sort of send over. If I if I get it to you, would you mind putting it on the desk and I'll, I'll put something in there for you too? So then it's a an envelope to them, which then has got a parcel inside it. And I, you know, stick some sweets and bits in there for the sort of person that's kind of doing my job of making sure it's on the desk. So mm -hmm. it might seem a bit sly and sneaky, but, you know... <laughs> you'll find that the, the top execs or the people that you really want to make an impact for have a higher level of screening for mail just hitting their desk. It will just revert yeah. to the, whereas yeah. if you go to a member of staff or someone in that team, they'll probably go, yeah, that's fine. I'll go and sneak it in there for you. And they kind of, yeah. when I mean, you've got the element of charity as well. So that's brilliant because it's like, who would say no to a charity? I mean, you, well, you're going straight to hell if you do that to be yeah. fair. So yeah, <laughs> you know, like let's, let's hope that you get a lot of people that I, will I, support I, you on that. So yeah, no, um, I can't, you know, Herefordshire is brilliant. You know, we've got some great businesses that support the charities in Herefordshire. It's just the, the fact that GDPR did put sort of, you know, worries upon us charities that we couldn't just go knocking on doors and, you know, we have to be very careful how we approach businesses in our format. And yes, we have to be a little bit savvy who we approach and how we get through to that door. Um, but it's just what with COVID and everything else has changed people's um, ideas and, and I, I, you know, what they're going to be doing in the next six months. Obviously, it's looking at what, what financing they can give away, how can they support charities and communities. So it's wondering now, I'm just thinking about outside the box, what do I, what's my next 
you know, going forward in the next six months to start fundraising again, but getting business back on board for charity. So I will do some direct marketing, like you say, as I go forward into 2021. Can't stop, got to keep going, but uh, it's been a very difficult time for charities. Yeah. But, um, but thank you for that sort of um, lift, really, to say that just no, do no, that very well. I will do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think, you know, sort of reverting back to your point about, um, you know, not sure how to sort of approach the businesses and things like that. I'm very transparent in everything I do on my own sort of social media. So, like, I'll I'll often post what I'm thinking, and I know that's what a lot of people won't do. So, a lot of my LinkedIn, and it will probably happen after this scene where I'll start thinking about something, and I'll just share it because I want the input. So, you know, I would say if I was you, Angela, and I always try to get in that. If that was my business, what would I do? I would almost go, you know, as we post on LinkedIn, you know, as we start to come out of LinkedIn, I'm really struggling or unsure of how to approach businesses or what they want to see from us as charities. So I'm looking for your help. And then what you're going to do is start to get people's input and then you can start to perhaps gravitate to those that are sort of showing an interest. So you can use your challenge as a piece of marketing because I think other than very big companies, I love to see the sort of humility and humbleness of a small business sort of navigating and going through challenges and, you know, nobody's perfect. No business is perfect. We've all got sort of stuff going on, but yeah. you particularly in an, in a, you know, Hereford, you know, you've got Herefordshire, there's very much that sort of unity of right support local, local power, make sure that we kind of prop one another up and, go where possible so again you make it even more specific say i'm calling on all my herefordshire business contacts so it's kind of that avengers assemble for herefordshire sort of philosophy and you know ask the question for help um when done right you'll find that actually you'll get loads of um sort of commentary like that to sort of level that up just as a bit of a marketing trick um if i ask you a question on on social media there's generally I feel like I'm giving away the secrets now, but if I ask you a question, most people inherent sort of feeling is to want to answer. It's like going back to want to. However, level up from that. If I give you a choice, then you can't help but pick one. So like, for instance, if I gave you um, a post and, it, you know, going in my world sort of thing, you know, like what color mo notebook would you like to see and there's no image or reference or choice you you know some people will get involved and some won't but if i go you know i can't decide whether to do mugs or notebooks which would you pick your first thought is not do i want to answer but do i want a mug or a notebook and it's just how the brain is wired you know so you see it sometimes a great sort of advertising thing is oh you know maybe rich has even done it with logos and things you give people a choice because you know that what they're going to go one or other sort of thing and it might be that your message is you know we're not sure whether we want to do the next hmb meeting at 12 o'clock or four o'clock can you let us know which and they'll, they'll pick one or the other so um yeah if you're in a position with your marketing to give people a choice yeah that will, will work really well so um, i'm just gonna have a quick check on the comments any other questions Gary saying first can be event. Nice to meet you all first time. Small consultant, structural engineering consultancy, no tree design, architectural practice, design building structure. So, you know, that's a that's a company that's definitely got a target market that you can sort of start to work with. So from Gary's point of view, I'd constantly be thinking, is everything I do talking the architect's language? You know, is it what they want to see? And again, it goes back around to that mindset of make sure your marketing is geared towards your perfect client and not necessarily everyone because it's not as exciting when it's a bit vanilla and kind of a bit sort of yeah one size fits all because there is no one size fits all so um the more specific you know specific is terrific um the more you can do on that front the better return you'll get um and that's where I tend to say, like, that's where planning out your marketing can really help because if you go, right, this week I'm going to focus, you know, if your target market, for instance, is accountants because of something that you do, you know, so Rich would, you know, in the bookkeeping world would fall into that sort of pocket. I want to work with sort of finance. Everything I do that week, I would make about finance. You know, I'd do a video and I would sort of speak to them and say, look, if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper in Hereford, I'd really like to contact you because I'm trialing a new product and I'd love people to take a look at it. 
you know, Rich is going to go, okay, that, uh, yeah, I'm a bookie. Okay, yeah, 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 that's me. He's talking to me and I'm interested. I'm more likely to respond. And rather than if you go the reverse, and this is what a lot of people do, they go sort of sell more than tell. They'll go, I've got software, da, da, da. it's all about them. So what I'm looking for is accountants. Unless Rich is really sort of software hungry and in the market for new stuff all the time for the sake of it he's probably going to scroll past even though there's a nugget in there right for him so just always your audience first um the more you can make it about them the better um so that would be a sort of good tip so how are we doing for time rich i'm, I'm full screen so i need to minimize to see what the clock yeah, says, no actually. that's brilliant um i've got a question for you you mentioned about video um a lot of people yeah. are talking about yeah, that video, especially now when we're uh, where we're on looking on screens all the time. Have you got any um, tips for people who aren't used to doing video or are scared of video? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Everyone hates it. You know, like anybody that loves video is is not right. You know, I think it's so you're not alone in that. And I think it's like any skill. I can't remember what they say about how many times you've got to do something before you're an expert. It's lots and. Um, there's a lot of outtakes and a lot of fumbles and things like that. But what I love is only, you know, how nervous you are. And also only, you know, what you meant to say. So like I fluffed up all sorts just on this stream now with you guys that I didn't mean to say it that way, but you don't know what I originally meant to say. And that's fine because we're all human. And that's, I try and say, imagine if you were networking, there's no do overs when you're having that one-to-one, -one. you can't go, Ignore that, ignore that, I want to start again. You just you just carry on, you style it out and you carry on, you know, you can't get around it. So it is horrible to begin with. More the so the playback, I find actually, hearing your own voice. So there's something quite nice about one take post it, don't even look at it. Um but also people love that insight. You know, one of my favorite series of all time is The Office with Ricky Chavez. And I think that's because it's that fly on the wall. If anybody's ever worked in corporate you can relate to some of those characters. You've all seen the receptionist get hit on the goofy guy that, you know, can never speak to people because he said, so you, it feels real. Like you're getting a window into their business. So something that's really good. There's two types of video for me, the video where you like this, where it's like, hi, I'm Rick from Romano. And you start to talk and that's the harder one to sort of kick off with, but you know, turn the camera around. That's what a lot of people don't look at is, show what you do you know so whether that's getting a tripod you know you can get cheap and cheerful tripods you could just video yourself at work you know richard for instance could video a stop motion of his design you know hours of work condensed into 30 seconds and that's so powerful because it's like you know what i never knew all of that went into that and suddenly you're given an insight into what you do and then it looks like oh okay that's what i'm paying for is that experience and you know knowledge to be able to do that even in that amount of time so you know, for all your businesses, a video walkthrough of your office, a little montage of your day, you, you'd be surprised what you can do videos for. Um, just as a sort of show of hands, has anybody come across Canva before? Have you used Canva, sort of online graphic design tool? So, perfect. So, um, big advocate for Canva for sort of quick fire, dirty sort of social media graphics. And they've got video options within there. So, anything you create um, as static images you can click animate at the top and turn that into a small video. So a video could be you effectively like a PowerPoint presentation. So anything you can create in that form could be a video. So yeah, don't feel you have to be that sort of star of the show. Look at me type video. Cause that's not always sort of comfortable. Um, and there's also video editing. So often I'll do a video like this where I'll be talking to camera. Um, and there'll be bits where it looks like I'm about to sneeze or it doesn't quite go right. And that's when I'll edit in a slide or a screenshot of something just to cover up the mistake. But me talking in the background tends to work. So, um, and you know, there's tools online and, you know, companies I'm sure sort of thing that can help you with that. And I can introduce you to a few if that's, if that's needed, but um, video will always perform really well on social media. So that's where it's popularity has come from. So, as a general rule, a live video will be seen first by the most and then a video, then sort of a GIF or something that's got a bit more dynamic, then sort of static photos, then text only posts. So the reason that everybody's waxing lyrical over video is because you're going to get more bang for your buck in terms of, you know, reaching audience and stuff online. So, um, 
the other way around it is to go on a podcast where someone does it on zoom and let them deal with the video and then just share it so um i know a few people that run sort of podcasts where they interview business owners and they just want to have that sort of q a and insight into what it is they do so you know that's a real quick fire way to sort of get used to to this but everyone's a little bit better now we've done zoom i would say like now we've kind of got used to seeing ourselves and in this format i think there's definitely a few meetings that I went to where people were sort of like this sort of, to begin with. They just didn't even want to be in this little postage stamp window. But um, yeah, now I think people are much more used to doing business this way. So yeah, you could just record your Zooms and then that would work. But um, yeah, hopefully that helps. But Yeah, brilliant. Uh, there's a question from Marcelo. So can you make an impact gain leads on social media, more specifically Instagram or Facebook without paying them for the targeted ads? This is the holy grail, the free organic reach that we all want. Absolutely. So yes, is the answer. Um, when, so I posted today uh, on my Instagram. Um, so it's just a quote that I put out there recently off the back of a conversation, which was, just because they didn't react doesn't mean that they didn't notice. And sometimes we can get so drawn into likes, comments, shares, those sort of vanity metrics, if you like. But it doesn't mean that people aren't noticing what you're putting out there. So don't be disheartened if two people like it or nobody likes it, because you'll be surprised how many people actually do see it. And obviously, you can go in and see the reach, and it's usually far higher than the actual amount of reactions to that sort of post. Um, a couple of different sort of strategies for that and again some of the tip sheets will cover that or, or give me a shout after more more than happy to put something more specific but um with regards to the leads in general that's where that sort of campaign where if you've got your page on facebook for instance talking one thing and then i would say you as an individual operating in groups that strategy can work quite well because as long as you're page is linked on your personal profile so that when you're active in that group they can see what your page is what you're going to do is basically reverse the traffic so people are going to go hang on who's this marcelo chap that's giving me a great comment here i'm going to go and have a look oh he does this brilliant and you can start to organically build that up um my suggestion would be pick two or three groups um specifically if you're a you know local business as well that's even easier because you pick some of the local groups and just absolutely dominate and i don't mean post advert after advert nobody wants to see a continual timeline that looks like a you know dfs advert with sale 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 but just add some value take interest in people um again human nature is that sort of reciprocity so if you if you like my stuff and comment on my things i'm going to be more inclined to feel like I kind of virtually owe you one. So, you know, you tend to find that in the groups that those that comment a lot or add a lot of value or, you know, if someone says, oh, I'm looking for someone to, you know, sort out my bookkeeping and it's that same person that's going, oh, I'll have a chat with Rich or my new logo, oh, I'll go and have a chat with Rich. You know, they're that sort of connected person. People take interest in you then and all you're doing is offering value and advice. So you're not even selling. So people are, we are a curious bunch us humans we are nosy or nosy depending on which way you look at it um but we love to know who people are and what we do so i mean my fiance takes it to another level she's a private investigator so she's more of a sort of professional stalker so um she'll go a little bit deeper than most but most of us will look at who is it that's commented and then on the profile it will say you know director at or you know owner at and you'll often have a look at that page and you'd be surprised how again two or three minutes a day that might be how you use that making a cup of tea time is in the groups just sort of thinking i'm gonna make me a go-to person in this group and then i'm gonna have a look at another one and then you don't need to sort of put so much legwork in um on instagram the directness of instagram is something where you can really sort of grow what is it you do marcelo sorry i don't i caught that actually in the intro uh are you a security guy so, yes so security so yeah um so that's where on Instagram, um, I tend to, I have a process that I follow where I'll search hashtags and it might be done by area if you're sort of location based or you can search by industry and I will go and like and follow the type of businesses that I want to work with and then what I do is I spend time every day making sure I like the posts of the business that I want to work with and I also make sure I comment on every single post that there's where relevant 
and I don't mean the sort of things that look like the bots that are out there where it's like as soon as you post it's like nice job love that thumbs up bit bit sort of generic but take a genuine interest you know and I try and sort of think of it if I sort of said hi Marcelo what do you think of that what would you say and that's what you type in that box and just the, the win that that is, is, and I've got a load on my phone now, but um, you want to be that positive notification on somebody's phone or their desktop. And, you know, you're all business owners. We just talked about what it's like to get those likes and comments. If you are that name constantly coming up, Romano likes that, Romano likes that, Romano said this, Romano said that, they're going to be at least interested in who Romano is and, and what it is that person's doing. And then they're going to look at you and then they're going to look at your profile and hopefully having listened to, to this today, that's where your profile is going to be specifically geared up to, to that type of person. So they're like, oh, okay, they work with people like us. And that's when, you know, you message them, slide in the DMs, if that's your phrase, you know, whatever it might be. Um, not many businesses are using the direct message option on Instagram. And I, and I mean, not many at all, less than 1%. You know, all the kids, the celebs, all of that, absolutely all over it from direct messages but businesses i i will probably send over 100 messages a week on instagram or with my va and sort of team that's what our output is we probably get 50 or 60 back so i mean that's a great return on activity and i'm not saying that's 50 60 jobs but that's at least 50 60 people that will follow we're into a conversation then where at least i can qualify them to go look my process is let me send you some stuff. See what you think. I'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks. You go in the diary. We follow them up and and so forth. If you did a hundred phone calls, there's no way you'd get through to 50, 60 decision makers. I don't care who you are. Like unless you're Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Balfour level, then it's just not going to happen. So it's a real good way to manage businesses and smaller businesses. Uh, going to be a winner that is probably going to flash up on their phone. Um, so an extra little to try and do that in the evening or the weekend. Have we lost you? <laughs> I think he's gone. Asleep. Yeah, <laughs> he's melted. <laughs> he's been remarnoed. Yeah, we'll see if he comes back on. Um, while he's uh, trying to get back. Back on again. Um, I've got a couple of notices. If anyone's got any uh, any notices or anything that they want to share, please just put a note in the chat box. What I'll do after the uh, after the event, hopefully later on today, is I'll send over an email with a copy of the chat. Um, we'll get Rick to put all his um, links and that in the chat to all his PDFs that he was talking about. I've got copies of them and they're brilliant. Uh, really good to look at. Um, uh, and you are really stealing them. So that's it's a brilliant opportunity there. Uh, my couple of quick announcements. Um, the government Kickstarter scheme uh, that's just coming in. I'm just checking with Ange to see if she knows any more. Um, but the, that's where um, the government are paying for the first 24, 25 hours a week for new employees. Um, now, they changed the rules a bit and said that it had to be 30 employees. Uh, new employees, uh, but I think the council or the or the Marches Growth Hub are going to try and put things together into uh, one claim. If you're only wanting to look at employing one new person, um, as soon as I know any more about that, I will um, put a, a post out and uh, put it on the the website for people to look at um, when I do get details of that. Because obviously, we we do want if people have got one new employee that they that they can um, get, then um, then that will be brilliant. Yeah. And my other only other notice. Yeah, I, sorry, Richard, I can't add any more to that. But you know, carry on linking with yourself and Heritage Council because there is a wealth of information out there that's coming through now. But I think yeah. it is to do linking with Marches Valley P as well. Yeah, I think so. And also locally, Landau can help. I, I know that the late the, the reps have, have obviously been to our events in in the past. Um, equally, if if um, and the chamber can facilitate as well. Um, and uh, you know, uh, if you've got any questions, um, the Marches uh, Skills Provider Network ca can assist, and I can um, act as an intermediary there. So, um, any questions on that, I can also help. Um, if anybody's got any questions on the Kickstart or the um, new apprenticeship incentives, um, and we're just awaiting further information. Really, we're hoping that 30 
will be adjusted down because of how much of a negative um, reaction it's had from, from SMEs. It doesn't seem aimed at SMEs uh, as a result, um, but you know it, it is what it is at, at the moment um, and I can send relevant links um, to the latest information as well. Brilliant, yeah, so if you can put that in the chat as well, I'll get that um, over to everyone. Um, my only other uh, information is Adam Brooks, who is um, one of our speakers at our events, and he's also, he was actually the speaker at the first one of these online events. Uh, he's a great uh, speaker with his sales academy. He is starting a back to school business education session. Uh, he's doing nine different sessions. Uh, he's calling it the 99 i've lost the link to it um but basically the first one is at 9 30 tomorrow they're all free the first one's called how to deal with change um and what he's what he's doing is he's saying he's going to do them all for free uh, but i think they're in our sessions um he's got how to drive engagement to social media how to sell more little voices how to become prolific on social media etc etc there's nine of them and if uh, all, all he's asking is if uh, five people donate twenty pound uh, to um, Winston's Wish, which is one of the charities that he works with. Um, he wants to raise a bit of money uh, by doing these sessions. Um, I'll be attending, and the link hopefully has been put in the chat. Um, so if you want to attend, please do. Uh, Adam, we know is is brilliant. He's a great speaker and a great supporter of HMBs. Um, so I'll make sure that the links are all in there for that as well. Has anyone else got any? questions or queries rick you're back with us are you, are you there hello yeah sorry mate i know that i think we had a bit of a power blip so although the laptop stayed on the router died so yeah sorry about that guys oh dear. yeah uh, thank you very much for um for speaking today i did mention about your um oh, welcome mate yeah, things that you're gonna um, post over for us that'd be brilliant if you, if you can put those in the chat or send them directly to me I'll send an email out later um, to everyone okay yeah cool and I, I'm not, you know I love a notebook so uh, if you've got any <laughs> here, here we go here we go yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that's it I think we've uh, we've um, exhausted everything if anyone has any uh, any other things they're wanting to say please put them in the chat just now uh, but we'll be back again in October. It'll be the second Wednesday in October, uh, back here online. Um, and uh, it was good to see everyone. Thank you to those who are new. Uh, hope you can join us again. Um, and that's it from us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rick, for your, for speaking. And we'll see no you worries, all soon. Stay safe. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Rick. Lo lo lovely Bye. to see you again. Thank you.